Hello again, Chris Arell here. In this video we are gonna pick up where we left off on genetic algorithms. More specifically, we are gonna see how to implement the fitness function, the get random gene function, and a few other optimizations. But first, it was pointed out in the comments that the arguments of the fitness function are switched, and they're absolutely correct. It should receive an int as an argument and return a float, and not the other way around, so let's fix that as the first thing. So it should be int first, and then float. Then we must also change it everywhere else, in here, and also in the genetic algorithm class, right here. And I believe that's it. Let's just jump over to Unity and see if it compiles. It compiles, it's just throwing a warning, but we'll fix that in just a second. Okay, so let's jump over to the script I have previously created called Test Shakespeare. I will provide you with the code in here, because most of it doesn't really have to do specifically with genetic algorithms. So don't really worry too much about what's here, let's just focus on the genetic algorithm itself. So the first thing that we gotta do is actually create an instance of the genetic algorithm class. So this is gonna be a genetic algorithm for which the type of his genes is gonna be char, because we want to generate a phrase, and the phrase is clearly a list of characters, and I'm just gonna call it ga for short, and in here in the start function we need to actually initialize it, create the instance of the object. So the size of the genetic algorithm's population is defined up here, in this population size integer, so we'll just pass it in. The DNA size is gonna be the size of this target string, it's the phrase that we want to get to, so we'll just say that it's target string dot length, the size of the gene array for each individual of the population. We will also need to do that thing that I talked about in the previous video, where we have only one object of type random, that we can then reuse. And it's giving us some conflict because it's confused, it doesn't know if it should use the class in the system namespace, or the random class in the Unity Engine namespace. In this case, we're gonna use the system namespace. And we'll just give it to the constructor here. And now we need the get random gene function and the fitness function, which we ha still haven't implemented. So let's leave it at that for now and implement these these functions first. Okay, for the get random gene function, we know it needs to return a character, and we're gonna call it get random gene or get random character actually. All right, so we know we gotta generate some sort of random numbers, so we are gonna need to use this random object we have here, but what now? What what else do we need? Well, to make this a lot easier, I just defined up here a string called valid characters, which, as the name implies, contains all the characters that we are going to allow this to generate. So the easiest way to get a random character from the valid character string would be to generate a random int that would go from 0 until the max index of that string. And now we have the index of a random element in that list, so let's just return whatever character is at that position. And there you go, that's to get random gene function. Let's tell the genetic algorithm to use it. And now we just need the fitness function. Okay, for the fitness function, we know we need to return a float. And we're actually gonna call this fitness function. What the hell do we need to do with this? We also need to pass in an int as a parameter, of course. Okay, so we know we need to give a score to each phrase, depending on how close it is to our target phrase. So let's define a variable called score that will start at zero, and we will go through each character in that phrase. Let me actually change this to another name. We are gonna go through 
the population element index and we're gonna go through his genes I mean genes length going to rewrite this slightly for better readability so for each gene in this individual's gene array we are going to check if the character at each position is the same character in the target string at the same position and if it is we would let's say increase his score by one but just to make this a little bit neater since we know which solution is the 100% correct solution we can actually just sort of normalize the score value to be a value between between 0 and 1 which means between 0% and 100% and in order to do that we just need to divide the score by the target string's length and now that we have calculated our score let's just return it and that's the fitness function let's just tell the constructor also to use it as we did with the get random character function and this also takes in as an extra argument the mutation rate we have actually up here also defined the mutation rate that we can change in the unity inspector so let's just assign this instead of leaving the default value and the last thing that we need for this to actually do something is in the update method tell the genetic algorithm to make the new generation I will also uncomment this function right here and don't worry about this this is just to update the UI as I said I will provide the code that I'm not covering directly in this video so let's get over to unity and see if this is working okay it compiled without errors let's hit play so this is giving us an error and the problem here is that the best genes array hasn't been initialized and so down here in the calculate fitness function when it tries to copy stuff over to it, it's null and it crashes. So let's initialize it here in the constructor. Best genes is gonna have the size, the NA size. It's the same size as the gene array of each individual. Alright, cool, it seems to be working. No, it has actually hit our target phrase and then it went back down again a few times and that's because we never told it to stop let's just right here if the best fitness is one then we are gonna say this dot enabled equals false it will just disable this script and it will cause it to stop updating actually we want the UI to update before it stops so this should be the last thing that we do let's just move it over here let's see if it does what we wanted it to do and any moment now alright it hit our target phrase and it stopped 436 generations not terrible but there's clearly some improvements that can be made so let's look into that now one of the most important optimizations that you can make is making the fitness function exponential but what do I mean by that well that essentially means that the difference between having for example five characters correct and having six characters correct is not only just a little bit better it's in fact much better and if we want to translate that into the way that we are scoring our individuals that means that between those two phrases there shouldn't be a score difference of just one it should be a much bigger difference and so in order to make this exponential we just have to write something like this So we are just saying that our score is now 5 to the power of score, whatever value it is. However, since for this example we wanted to have fitness values between 0 and 1, we will have to change this slightly, since now this is going to output values between 1 and 5. And so there's a mathematical function that behaves exponentially for values between 0 and 1, which is exactly what we wanted, and it goes something like this. I will leave a link in the description with more information on this. Let's continue with some other optimizations. We're gonna start with an easy one. We're just going to pass in the population size to the list constructor. 
This will just make it so that it allocates enough space for the entire list and in doing so reduces the number of times this might have to resize the internal array and reduce our garbage allocation. The next thing also has to do with memory allocation and in here, in the new generation function, we keep instantiating a new list every time and we can very easily avoid this if we just keep this list out here as a class variable and we just need to create it at the same time we create the regular population list and we'll do the same thing passing in the correct size in the new generation function instead of creating a new list every single time we can just clear whatever was in the old list and this just stays the same and now we just need to switch between the two of them this line is going to stay here but we need to add some other stuff we're gonna need a temporary variable to hold one of the lists which I'm just gonna call temp list so this one is gonna hold the population the original one the population is going to switch to be the new population and then the new population in preparation for the next cycle, the next time we call new generation, is gonna point to the old population, which is now held in temp list. And this way we can just keep two lists and keep switching between the two instead of creating new ones every generation. One optimization that's very widely used in genetic algorithms is called elitism, and it just consists in keeping the best individuals of, of the population from one generation to the next. This means that instead of crossing over every single individual of a new generation, for the first, let's say, five individuals of a new generation, we are just gonna keep the five best individuals of the previous generation without any changes. I believe the easiest way to do that is to first sort our population by fitness, with the best elements at the top, and after that, inside this for loop, we are just going to check if the index is less than however many elements that we want to keep. And if so, we are just going to do new population dot add that individual. We'll just add it to the new population without changing anything. Otherwise, we are just going to proceed with the crossover as normal. So now we have to define this elitism variable. We're just going to go up here and declare it as an int and we also need to change the constructor in order to initialize the elitism variable but we still need to tell this sort method how to sort and in order to do that we have to implement a comparison function and the comparison function is a function that as the name implies compares two objects in this case we want to compare two objects of type DNA which I will call A and B and this comparison function in our case we want to compare the fitness so if the fitness of the first object is bigger than the fitness of the second object we will return minus one and this will indicate to the sort method that the first object should come before the second object in the list however if the fitness of the first object is smaller than the fitness of the second object then we want to return 1 and this indicates to the sort method that the first object should come after the second object and in the last case if the fitnesses are equal then we will just return 0 which indicates to the sort method that we don't know which one should come first and now we just need to tell the sort method to use the comparison function we just made and back in the test Shakespeare script we should also add a new variable in order to be able to edit the elitism in the unity inspector and we also need to give it to the constructor down here I'm also gonna give the elitism variable a default value of let's say 5 just so that we don't forget and it stays at 0 and finally we'll test it in unity and see if we were able to improve our results Awesome, close to 100 generations, that's much better than what we did last time. Let's just try it one more time. 
It seems our optimizations did work. So this is it for this video. Join us next time where we'll be seeing the algorithm being used in a small video game prototype and we'll also be modifying it to allow new individuals to be added while the algorithm is running, among a few other interesting details. Thank you for watching and see you next time.